It's last call. But does anybody care? Last call. Sold out. No longer available. But really it is. Welcome back everyone. MTG Moxman here. I hope you're having an awesome day wherever you are in the world of Magic the Gathering. It's, it's a great day to play Magic. It's that time of year when things start to rotate out. We're getting closer to the end. And I know for a fact a lot of these things are now out of print already. They're not making any more. They're filling the final orders. They're releasing the final shipments and they're calling it a day. I'll be honest though, that doesn't mean anything. Because it doesn't just disappear. They don't take it out to an incinerator and destroy it. It sits in a warehouse somewhere. Distributor level at first. Slowly trickling out to LGSs who limp along and say they may want a product. And then it goes out to us, the consumers. Some of it gets cracked. A lot of it, I think, actually still gets stored, depending on the type of box we're talking about. So this year, we have a few good sets rotating out. We'll go over each one of the four standard sets going out. And I'll explain why or why not I think we have some issues. Okay? So first off, let's start with D&D. You guys know I love this set. If you've watched this channel more than a hot minute, you know I'm big on d and I loved it. Great flavor. Great, great cards that I enjoyed playing with. And against every other set that was there at the time, so underpowered that people hated it. There's a couple of good cards. Love the, love the land cycle. Hollow Storm Giants and stuff is finally kind of upticking. You got Den of the Bugbear. You know, the mana cycle is not evil, but it's not great. I love some of the artwork for the set. But a lot of people had a real issue. If they'd shaved some of the mana costs and done some tweaking, this could have been a truly epic set for Wizards. They missed the mark. Okay? Even I can admit that. Against everything else out there, they missed the mark. But I enjoyed playing it. I look at this set now. And it hasn't been printed in probably six to seven months. They haven't done any extra printings of this set. I think this one had a first and second run. And that's all. And the second run was small. Because I know at the distributor level... They got it sitting in warehouses. And I know for a fact the stores have it sitting on shelves. So that doesn't help anybody. When you're talking about product draining from the market, the stores are going to either have to get the distributors to fire sell it to them so they can move their product along, which means the stores will get to fire sell it to us. And they got to hope we want to buy it because people are going to pass on this product quite a bit. I paid full price for this and I, I stuck to my order and kept everything I said I would keep. But I'm not going to be buying more right now. That's not where I'm going to be diverting my cash this year. Unless it's dirt cheap, like $80 Canadian a box, I couldn't pass that up. Because it won't take a lot more to start making profit on those boxes in the future. But there has to be a market for that box as well. If you're going to be an investor in flipping these, if you're a player who wants to enjoy them, these fire sales that may or may not happen could really interest you at some point if you didn't buy any of the product to begin with. It's always good to have a draft night, right? But when I look at D&D for right now as an investment, it's going to take years and years to recuperate the value from this set. So I'll be waiting a very, very long time. And I can accept that with no problem. I'm in this for the long haul. But D&D, when you look at it locally right now, let me pop this up for you here. Right? It says it's out of print there. It says out of print. Again, out of print doesn't mean anything if the distributor's got 10 pallets sitting in their warehouse right now. Right? And the stores have got 50, 60 boxes in the back room. It means absolutely nothing. But if there's a lot of it, it could find itself on sale before you know it. Christmas time last year, local places here in Toronto didn't really have great deals. Um, but hopefully that changes this year. Hopefully we get some great deals. You never know what's going to happen. Depends on how cheap things come out from the distributor. It lets the stores know what they can mark up. Places like Face to Face, Harry T, 401 Games here in Toronto. Those kind of things can happen, right? So these boxes right now are $119.95 for draft or for set booster, okay? I remember those being 134 and 144. So they're already actually negative technically from what the stores were selling them at before. They're already on sale. Is that a deep enough cut to make me buy any? No, it's not. Even at 105 bucks, I wouldn't be buying any more because I think the time it'll take to make my money back is a little bit too long right now to reinvest and tie up capital into those type of assets. It does mean it wouldn't be enjoyable for a draft or having some fun, but I'm not gonna sit it on my shelf for another 12 years waiting for it to turn itself a profit and finding a buyer who wants to buy it at those prices. Keep that stuff in mind if you're thinking about flipping and investing in these type of things. 
when things rotate out, it takes a time depending on the product line. Okay. So for D and D ads, give you a pass right now. Can't help myself. Now let's talk about good old Zendikar rising also rotating out, but Hey, pathways are in here. Remember pathways? You remember pathways. We all remember pathways and that means pathways are rotating out. Who knows what future home those will find in commander, but they're going to be five to seven, $10 cards, depending on which print of it. And if it's full art, fancy and stuff. Okay. They're going to have value. They're going to have long-term durability. I guarantee it. I still buy them when I get the chance. If I see an allotment of cheap ones for like four bucks, I still grab them. Now this doesn't just have pathways in it though. Does it No, I know it doesn't right there, right about there is that beautiful box top, which could be a fetch land. That is like icing on the cake, icing on the cake. Now, when we look at these things locally, let me show you these bad boys here. Okay. Yeah. It's out of print. You notice it's already gone up. This was 104 bucks last year at Christmas. I didn't buy any. I had a case of set and a case of draft. I didn't feel I needed any more. 129.99 Canadian, 195, sorry. And then you got the set boosters at 144. Notice those ones aren't as cheap because those are drying up on the market. So the stores don't need to knock them down. They don't need to price them down right now, which tells you right away. Those are a little bit light. There's a little bit less out there, but they did have a fifth print run, small waves after wave two, but they did get restocks. Okay. They went back to the printing press for the sex. It was popular at the time and yeah, the valve got cut off, but it's still sitting at that distributor level. It's going to take a while to clear it out. I'd say this probably won't really go on much more of a sale than what it's at now. And hopefully you have positions in this. If it's something you're after, it does have a good name to it. Okay. When I think of Zendikar rising, oh, when I think of Zendikar or battle for Zendikar, oh, they're awesome sets. That adventuring world is a very cool thing. I wish they'd done more with the party mechanic myself. I really do, but it's still a very enjoyable set. It's going to be well thought of. It's going to age nicely in the next five years because it doesn't just have this going for it. It's not just the draft and set, right? You've also got that collector. I remember opening like six fetch lands from this thing. It was amazing. And that kind of memorable situation will drive people to buy collector boxes of these types. These will hold some serious value later on. I remember these being as cheap as 219 Canadian a box because the money had moved on and people were freaking out. Those who just kind of bought a couple here and there and held on, you're going to do very well in the future. Zendikar rising. If I had a chance to get it a little bit cheaper than this, I would be tempted to buy a few more boxes just to have for drafts and for possible investment purposes. Five years from now, you don't really know where it's going to go until it's hit past the five year mark. But I got to say, cause not everything's going to be the dominaria effect. We're like, Oh, look at dominaria. They didn't shut the valve off that fast. Okay. It didn't just have one and a half, two print run and call it a day. It didn't have that happen. Okay. When we saw this one here, guys, we saw it hit big It had a great time. People played it and enjoyed it. And it slowly kind of petered out as the money moved on, but it has a good name. It has good memory and people are going to be willing to buy that in the future. All right. At least I would want to five years from now. Now our next set called Heim. I currently do not hold any called Heim. I think I have maybe one collector box back there. I have no boxes of this product currently in stock at my house. Kind of crazy. I did buy some cheap. I did, I did give, I, I'm sorry. I bought it, but I sold it to somebody who wanted it and just couldn't pick it up themselves. You know, I do that for some of the patrons and stuff, right? So 129 95 for the set or the draft. Okay. Now remember this has got stuff like Voren clicks. Very cool. We have the harder to get pathways. The last four pathways are in this set and we have all the cool kind of Norse God theme going on with this set, which is exciting. It wasn't a bad set. I didn't really like what wizards did the whole Viking thing on their live stream stuff. I hated that. It looked so cheesy, but the set itself I thought was pretty good. I had a good time with it. I like the mythology and stuff they put in there. Execution eh, five out of 10 product itself. I'm going to give it a solid seven. It's nice. And I will pick it up if it goes on sale. I want to have a little bit of this product at some point. And I know right now the um, collector boxes are not that expensive. So it's one of those products. I'll probably buy a couple more because they're always good to use later on for some of the stuff I like to do on my channel with my patrons. So it is something I'm thinking about. It's a decent product that just didn't have a good time when it was out. Okay. It doesn't mean it was a bad product, but people just didn't gravitate to it like they did other cards. 
that may be a regret of people later on. These are rotating out sets. Out of print, yes. It got a couple of print runs that were solid. It's been restocked. Stores have it in stock right now. But again, it's not a massive overstock. They're not refilling themselves, which means the distributor level probably has quite a bit left. You're looking probably four or five years to start really draining it from the market. So this is one I can wait and see what happens. I'm not in a rush. I don't think the price is going to jump up just out of the blue. It may go up four or five bucks, but I'm willing to accept that because it used to be $134.95 and $144.95. So it's still underpriced from where it was. I can sit and let that and say, no problem. Now, the last one we see rotating out, that is going to be Strixhaven. Now, the interesting thing here is Strixhaven, you can see draft is $124.95. And then we have the set boosters at $119.95, which means, of course, they have more of that in stock. This set kind of went by and nobody really cared. There were some cards I like, and I still use some of my decks right now, like Rowan and Will. I use those cards, but I don't have attachment to the set. I don't have a feel like, oh, I want to play it. And when I see that and I see those prices, I go, it's going to be a forgotten set. People are going to whiz by it and say, I really don't care about this right now. There are a lot cooler products out there. And I'm not sure how that will play out four or five years from now for that product going forward. It'll have a harder time, in my personal opinion, growing and gaining market share and actually accumulating value. If you don't have big, high biting cards inside that set, if there isn't some cool chase, I mean, they had, you know, the the, um, the archives, that they, they were cool, but they made them so common that nobody cared. Remember Faithless Looting? Nobody cared. Guys, it just it got overkilled. Unless, no, I guess I guess you get the demonic tutor, right? Right? Is a demonic tutor could be in there? Could be could be some value, right? I mean, I, I guess that one, right? But is that enough of a chase to make people buy the box? Maybe later on, but I don't think so right now. People's eyes are just attached to other products and they're looking at those and they say, Modern Horizons 2, anyone? Like, that's where the eyes are going. So, for those products, I don't see them grabbing onto them. I know I'm not going to. I do have a case of the draft, and I have a case of the set, actually. Um, I bought them because the set really grabbed me at first, but after playing it, I wasn't as thralled, and it'll just sit there, you know, gathering dust for a number of years, and we'll see how it turns out. You never know if you get lucky sometimes, right? I like to spread the money around and say I'm going to be buying a little bit of this and a little bit of that. But when it comes to rotation this year as a whole, these aren't Triumphs rotating out like last year's Ikoria. I just don't think people have that same feeling for the sets rotating out this year. I just don't think it's going to be a big thing. With the new stuff coming in, we have Streets of Mukupena. We got Kamigawa. And then we're going to have, what, Brothers War and, and, and Dominaria? Finishing things off? It's going to be disgustingly powerful. We're going to love it. Can't wait to see these sets rotating in. So I think that's where the money will be. And with Crimson Vow Midnight Hunt really being left in the back corner somewhere down the stairs by themselves in the dark, nobody's going to care about them. And they're going to sit there too. But the good news is, for things that didn't get the extra print runs like D&D, if something catches later, if some cards later on catch, and the market does eat those up, you're going to see some massive gains. Because if they're really cheap still and all of a sudden some card catches fire or a few cards really find usage, you're going to see those boxes just get gobbled up overnight. And that will be fascinating if that happens to one or two cards in a couple of these sets. So I'll be looking forward to seeing how that pans out in the next 24 to 48 months. It takes time. These things don't happen overnight. And sometimes it's so imperceptible, most people miss it. They don't realize it's happening until they walk into a store and they say, what happened to all your D&D stuff you used to have in the front shelf? Oh, dude, it sold, didn't you hear? right? Because we've moved on to new products and we're checking things out. So you guys let me know. What do you think about some of these products lines that are now rotating out? Do you even care? Or are you more excited for the stuff coming in? Do you feel this stuff was powered down and not really worth your time? And the new stuff coming in is pretty awesome and amazing and that's where you're going to put your bucks? Curious to know, guys. Thanks a lot for tuning in. MTG Moxman, I will see you guys all tomorrow. Thank you once again to all the amazing patrons on this channel. Your continued support each and every video, each and every month is so appreciated, guys. Thanks again for supporting. Well, there we go. 
Our card for the 10K bin today is a Manticore. I mean, I wish it cost one less. That'd make it a lot more playable of a card. Which would still mess that up, I think. If they just shaved a few casting costs, some of the cards in this set would have been seen as iconic. Like, just amazing. But it's okay. You know what? You guys made it to the end of the video. The Manticore is gone in the box. And we have a lot of things rotating out. And I'll be curious to see how some of those sales figures add up from those stores around Christmas time. Because that's when those things kind of hit. Is at the Christmas hour. When people see deals and sales. Because everyone's tax return money is being used up by then. And they waited for deals with the last little bit of their money. Or with Christmas bonus money. Interesting stuff. So thanks a lot for tuning in guys. You made it till the end. And we are going to say Army of Darkness in the comments section. Because you are worthy. That's right. Shop smart. Shop as smart. Have a great day guys.